Welcome back, folks, to another one of these conversations that we have with Hope City, the new church plant helping persons to find their hope in Christ regardless of what they face. Come as you are, no perfect people allowed. So over the past few weeks, we've been getting to know Hope City better. We started off looking at teaching and modeling worship unto God. And then last week, we would have delved into helping persons to grow in their spirituality, identifying that it is a difficult thing, but it is so rewarding living your life with a focus on Christ. This week, we are into the third goal for Hope City, and that is sharing a message of hope. But as simple as it sounds, what is that really? Why is it that important? And with something so simple, doesn't everyone have a basic idea in their head of what it is already? As always with me, we have Pastor Jay of Hope City, and he's going to be answering these questions for us. Hey, yeah, Keith, thanks. Well, you know, the message of hope, um, I think, yes, in a way, everyone assumes that they understand a part of it. Um, I think, not, you know, especially people growing up around church and stuff, um, we we have an idea, but I just feel like within the culture, especially recently, um, mm-hmm. the basic message of, of Christianity mm-hmm. sort of gets a little bit moved um, with a whole lot of different stuff. All right, nice. So, I would start off by saying, you know, the, the, the gospel or the message of hope is the gospel, the good news. That's how it's defined. And it's good okay. news because it starts at the basis that um, all of us have sin keys, you know. We know the Bible tells us, you know, all have fallen short of the glory of God. But it, I mean, you don't even have to believe the Bible to know that we all sin. Like, yeah. look, look at a child, you know, teach them how to lie, you know, teach them how to be greedy or, you know, be mischievous. Yeah. Um, mm. in us. When we become adults, sometimes we sometimes we live and operate like if we don't, but we still, um, we still do what we say we're not supposed to do, whatever yeah. our moral standard is, you know? Um, yeah. So whatever the basis is, and I think we all can admit that we all fall short, whatever mm-hmm. standard we measure against. Some, you know, and um, the, but what where, where the Bible comes in now is that the punishment for sin um, is eternal separation from God. And people say, well, hey, how could a loving God, um, right, right, you know, send people <laughs> to hell? But it's not that He sends them to hell. It's, think about it this way. I always say, like, if someone came into my home and um, did awful crimes and maybe hurt my family or something, yeah. it's it's not loving. Let's say you are the judge. For me, it's not loving for you as a judge to tell that man, hey, take a blight, you know, just don't do it next time. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to see what? Justice. Even though a sinner like me, we have a bare, um, bare bone belief in injustice and we know. We know a certain standard of right. And yeah. so think about it in God's character. He is just. He is holy. So when wrong or evil comes into his presence, because that's what sin is. It, it, it's evil towards him. It's breaking mm-hmm. his law and, and mm-hmm. sinning against him. So when he comes into it, he can't just say, hey, take a free pass kind of thing. Yeah. Because then he will no longer be just. And we know that when, 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 when a judge or somebody who twist the law for the benefit of somebody else. We always say that's corrupt. That's corruption. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So we, we had to look at it from the love and justice aspect. So the punishment for sin is that eternal yeah. separation. It's so strange, eh? That when you look at it like that, you know, we we are a whole, we judge a man. Right. right. That's such a high standard now to be able to uphold the law and then for right. God. <laughs> we <laughs> want like, why, why? Why God? Why like God had to do that now, right? Right, right. <laughs> because it reflects on us personally now. now. Correct. So we were the blind. We were the blind. <laughs> right? For real. For real. And, and yeah, and that's it. I mean, when you think about it, like that, it, it makes a little more sense, you know? It's still a heavy thing because I hope we realize that we, we none of us can live up to that standard of God. And that's yeah. one of the other points. But here's what, and, and that's what I want to say that because we can't live up to that standard of God in ourselves, um, there's no way we could earn ourselves into heaven. So some people say to me as a pastor, you know, I don't come to church or I don't do this or I don't do something that's a subsidy as a Christian, but I give to the poor, I do charity work, whatever. Yeah. 
and people believe that good works will get you into to heaven um but actually it really doesn't work that way so here's how it says ephesians 2 8 9 and i love this for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest anyone should boast so bible is just being clear that we know it's not our works else men will boast and then that is sin in itself as well you're back to square one right but um that, that's that's the facts of it what we know about it next so we are sinners we know the punishment for sin is that we will be separated from god we know that because he is holy there is no darkness in him next thing we know is that we can't do anything no works could get us to heaven to be in his presence um and any next thing that we know so god knowing that kids this is why we say this is the good news the message of hope is even though that you and i cannot do it in ourselves to earn that righteousness to to be worthy to go back before god because i always say this kids on my best day i still is fall short I might yeah. I might act a certain way and people may think I'm doing good but sometimes in my mind I think some of the wrong thoughts I get angry with something and you know it still falls short and so I can't pretend what I saw God knowing that man can't get back to him on their own he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins and that's the good news that you know Christ came and what he did he walked a, a sinless life here on earth as man because I'm a man sin that any beginning with Adam a man right. has to redeem us so God sent his son so that he could live that perfect life that he could redeem us from from our own sins and so that and as and as I think we we know that in scripture it says that Christ is our high priest and he was tempted in every way yet without sin so it meant he was tempted the same way we are tempted you in the francis he don't give in we give in sometimes we slip up we make a mistake but as a good news that when he came he died he was buried and on the third day he rose again meaning that he defeated death and sin you see because the wages of sin is death so what he did he took on our sin and he yeah. rose again because being sinless he was able to conquer it and and that's really it Christ is the perfect sacrifice and here's the thing the sacrifice is to appease the justice of God is and the expression is because remember God has to be loving but he also has to be just yeah. so the wrath of God was poured out on Christ for your sins right. for my sins and right. that is the gospel you know plenty of other faiths and religions tell you what you have to do to be saved in christianity that's the core difference and i think it's and i think that's why we have in this conversation because i believe that is the message that needs to come back to the forefront mm-hmm. that it's not so some people in the church world we we tell them it's not your church attendance it's not right. if you pay tithes right. it's not your communion you know like people fool themselves thinking if i do this if i do that yeah yeah, yeah. i think for a lot of christians you know um i guess just from especially when you're coming up from right. a young age you know and having to translate it in your head mm-hmm. you know from that 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 smaller perspective it really comes down to do x to get y do x to get y and then you end up in a position where you know you're kind of really doing it with the wrong motivation your focus is lost right, right? i mean even yeah. for me at a point in time in my life i found myself like sudden to wonder if i really wanted to do the good things that i was doing or if i was just trying to use it transactionally to, yeah, yeah, yeah. make sure you're good i i <laughs> had this kind of ambiguity now this this guilt even inside now like right like you know you're doing something good and you're not feeling good about it because you can't tell where your motivation the motive. is yeah where the motive yeah. is yeah. so for a long while i just had to do things and tell myself well here what doing the right thing is just doing the right thing you know for that period of time while i had to figure it out while you figure it out yeah yeah wow. so yeah that that's i could see a lot of christians you know get tired and, that, and, that and that's the thing eh? you 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 come out on the good side continually doing it but a lot of people just get turned off because they don't know you know exactly. they could take the other side they could take the other direction and so that's why right. the message is important 
But, and if you are Christian listening, I mean, it's just a refresher to remind you and then hopefully bring a little more clarity that you could actually share the message yourself. Because that's what we're supposed yeah. to be yeah. doing as disciples of Christ. Um, so, Christ died. Oh, you have a question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. Go, 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 shoot. Yes. As we touched on, you know, Christ having been that sacrifice, mm-hmm. we hear a lot of people ask the question, well, if Christ did go through that sacrifice, why is it that we still have to face the judgment? Because, oh, so that's, that's my last point, that salvation is God's free gift to us, but we must accept it. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the beauty and also the... I would say probably the the, hmm, the word I'm looking for, maybe the, the, the risk that God gave us. He gave us free will. Just like right. he did for Adam. Right. Enjoy everything in the garden, but from this one tree, don't eat of yeah. it. For us, he gives us the free gift. So Christ died for us. But if mm-hmm. you never if you never receive him, so like this is how you receive him. Romans 10, 9 to 10 says that if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. So if you believe that Christ came, he lived sinless and he died, but God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it is a free gift for everyone, but we have to choose to receive that gift. I mean, and, yeah. and, and the world has come and brought so much misinformation about whether to trust the Bible, whether to believe this or that. It has always attacked Christianity and other faiths even, but yeah. Christianity, especially in the line of um, Bibles, etc., the word and whatnot, um, the validity of it. And so that's why, because the gift is there, but we have the choice whether to believe, to receive it, to receive that gift, and, and that's where it stands. So for me, it's... And why it's important, like you say, the judgment, because every because kids, I think everyone has some sense that there is something greater in our life. That, yeah. that when, when we die, that is not it. Yeah. You know, that's not it. Wherever you, wherever you believe, we have that because God placed that in us. And so just imagine, we all going to face our Creator one day. And the, the only question is, are you going to face them on your own strength, your own righteousness, if you feel like you're good enough, or if you're like us who understand that even on our best days we fall short, we go we go in the righteousness of Christ. Because when God looks at me on Judgment Day, He doesn't see me, He sees His Son, because I place my faith in Him who died, yeah. you know, sinless. And that's it. With this last one that we just went through here, you know, it kind of also brings back the importance of the first two, you know, especially the, the growth in the spiritual journey and really having that focus on Christ, right. you know, because it's like it's a puzzle, huh? you really can't just get the big picture without, you know, looking at all the pieces, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Anything you want to close us off with here this week? Uh, no, I mean, I think I think just through the questions and stuff, you really br- brought it home and yeah, it was a good convo. No, I'm no, because around. these, these, and these are the thoughts that just me personally would have had coming up and hearing questions from other persons. And right. I mean, I would not have had the answers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all the time, even though I would have had discussions. Sometimes yeah. different uh, topics would have come up in your life, and you have to be with the guys. And as much as people examining it and giving their own points of view, none of us probably would have taken the time to really get the answers and have the information yeah. to bring more than the speculation to the table so this is always nice to have yeah, yeah. appreciate so, that man <laughs> yours, I hope you enjoyed this month continue to follow us on Facebook and Instagram like comment share the videos and for those of you who might be interested in joining the Hope City team the contact information is there on all your accounts feel free to contact us let us know you're interested and we'll let you know how to be part of the journey Alright, so this is Keegs, your host, here with Pastor Jay. As always, as we leave you today, tune in next week for another episode. And remember, come as you are, no perfect people. Hello. <laughs>